I'm Andrew Lewis. Uh, I'm going to be talking about talking to myself. Um, but before I start, I'm going to talk, if, if you've ever talked to me, you, you probably know what I'm working on. I'm trying to put my life into a database. So pretty much every aspect of my history uh, I have importers for, and they're going into this database. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that today, but you can read about it on my website if you're interested. Um, but it's not just modern data that I'm trying to get my hands on. Uh, in uh, high school, I used to use MSN Messenger, and I saved all the transcripts. So I have this giant log of everything I've typed for the last many, many years. Um, did anybody use MSN? H hands up if you've... Yeah, cool. Okay, that's, that's better than I thought. So MSN was this uh, cool software package that taught high schoolers how to type really fast. Uh, <laughs> uh, you could also use it to talk to your friends. That was one of the features. Uh, <laughs> You know, obviously, uh, in high school, you don't have too many interesting things to say. Uh, so most of my logs are things like this. Uh, you know, they're really not great conversations. Uh, <laughs> I, I had this idea that I would save the logs and maybe have a reunion with some friends and read them in, in the future. Uh, this didn't really happen. Um, so <laughs> I have all these logs. I didn't really know what to do with them. So last year at Bang Bang Con, I was talking to Sasha and about these logs and this data. And she had this amazing idea. She's like, you should train a chatbot. <laughs> that knows how to talk to you based on these MSN logs. And then we got to jamming a little bit on the idea, and uh, it evolved into this. Uh, so one chatbot on my MSN logs from high school <laughs> talking to a modern version of myself from, uh, from more modern chat logs. Um, so this is a great idea. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so yeah, I decided to give it a shot. Um, so just to, just to see what we're working with here. Uh, <laughs> The person, the person who I was uh, in high school was quite different. I had some weird political beliefs. Uh, I had different ideas of a style. Uh, you know, I was really into Pink Floyd. So I think if we put these two chatbots together, we might have some interesting conversations. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to prepare the data. We're going to train the chatbot to speak like I did in high school. Then we're going to get it to respond to questions. Uh, finally, we're going to uh, get the chatbot to talk to a modern version of me. And then who knows what will happen. Um, so first, first step, preparing the data. Uh, I don't want to talk about it too much, but this is like really like the part that you underestimate. Um, like it's just going to be awful, and you think you're done, and you're not. So just like spend a lot of time on this. Uh, but I'm going to move on to the more interesting part, making it sound like me. So for this, we use a technique, a deep learning technique called RNNs. Uh, these are, if you've ever seen a Twitter bot, there's a good chance it's using something like this. Um, and what an RNN does is it creates a vocabulary of every word in, in a corpus. Uh, it assigns an ID, and then it figures out a, like a sequence of likely, uh, of, of likely tokens. Um, so we can do this on our, on our MSN logs. And uh, at one, one epoch is basically going through the data set one time. So after a little bit of training, uh, we're basically getting random noise from my, from my past. So this is basically just like a random sampling of words that I've used in the past. Um, a bit more training, we get a little bit more form and shape that, that come into the words. Um, all your, if you've noticed, uh, I had a typo in watching. So all your typos and autocorrects are going to come back to haunt you. This is something I've learned. Uh, I was talking about this with my friend Max. Uh, he he, he uh, autocorrected really badly. Uh, and then every time I see this now, I'm thinking, like, you know, it's, it's going to show up in a future bot. <laughs> uh, so after 10 epochs, this is not too much again, but you know the, the structure is emerging a little bit better. Uh, and after 100 epochs, we're getting something that seems like you know seems sensible. It doesn't really make sense semantically, but it, you know it sort of sounds like me. So that's cool. <laughs> um, so th so we're going to move on to the part now. We're going to teach this bot to understand and respond to questions. Um, so what we're going to do is use a technique called seek to seek, uh, sequence to sequence. This was pioneered by Google a couple, year, couple years ago when they were figuring out how to do uh, machine translation. So what you do is you, you take a sequence of inputs, uh, you create a vector that represents roughly what it means, uh, and then you feed it into another decoder RNN that gives you a sequence of output words that are, are likely based on the input. Um, so you can use it for translation, like in this example, but you can also use it for generating conversations. So uh, we feed in like Floyd, and we get out, of course. Um, so this is generally when people are using generational uh, conversation and uh, chatbots, this is what they're using. Um, so slowly, a, a teenage Andrew emerges from hibernation and can start responding to questions. So let's have a look. Cool. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's slowly learning, you know, how to respond. A uh, <laughs> bit more training. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> what uh, generally uh, seek to seek will, will select for the easiest responses, and generally something it will learn very early as law works in almost every scenario. Uh, <laughs> 
So I was talking with my friend Andre about this, uh, and you know he started reinforcing this law behavior, and <laughs> basically my future chatbots are screwed going forward. <laughs> So after a bit more training, uh, we get we get some uh, we get a bit of semblance of understanding. So howdy, is something I used to say a lot in high school. I thought it was a cool way of saying hi. Um, <laughs> I can ask you questions and know how to respond. Um, you know, it talks like a teenager. <laughs> uh, so it knows how to understand these kind of basic questions and give something that sort of makes sense in response. Uh, so I. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So. You know, it has a little bit of an attitude, but it knows how to respond to questions, which is nice. Um, so I think we're ready to get us to talk to uh, you know, a, a chatbot that's based on a modern version of me. So, uh, so just a reminder, so we have Emerson Log chatbot with young Andrew Lewis and talking to a modern Andrew Lewis. Uh, this data is coming from Google Hangouts from the last couple of years. Um, so let, let's, have, let's have a go at it. So these are, these are generated. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> so, not really the deepest questions, but they kind of have a bit of a flow to them, which is fun. Uh, <laughs> doing anything last night? No. <laughs> Going to school? No. <laughs> There's a good. <laughs> so, so I, I searched. I searched my training material. I, I don't remember ever saying "There's a good lad." Uh, so this is like a new. This is like innovative. I think it's like it's come up with this phrase. I'm pretty proud of that. I guess. Uh, <laughs> So let's, let's have a look at some more output. Uh, you know, old Andrew was asking uh, young Andrew about big panels for the future. <laughs> I don't know how this happened. I swear this is all real output. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> so I. You can kind of understand why some of this is happening, but I, it's really hard to like debug these things. But like this is the output I got when when the two of them were talking to each other. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so that's I think this is like the this is the kind of level of conversation I managed to generate. Um, so <laughs> clearly, it's not you know the, the wittiest conversation. Um, so when you're when you're creating chatbots, generally the ones you see when you interact with like a Facebook bot uh, are in the top left category. So they're picking they're picking a response uh, in a very narrow domain. So these are pretty easy to do, um, and they're also frustrating to use because they really don't uh, handle a wide range of input. Uh, what I chose to do is actually the hardest of these. Is it generating new response and it can talk about anything? And this is like this is like really the hardest hardest uh, type of chatbot. Um, so when I thought when, when I started working on this idea, I, I na naively thought uh, I would have a conversation something like this. Uh, you know, young Andrew Lewis shows off like the cool band he discovered. Uh, old Andrew Lewis responds poorly. Uh, you know, old Andrew Lewis uh, like has has a witty response uh, about it, and then shows some attitude. So this is how I thought it would go. Um, so let's break it down. Uh, it's pretty hard to build a chatbot that incorporates general knowledge into into itself. Um, it's pretty, like, generally, uh, the corpuses that are available to train on are pretty small. People train on movie scripts or uh, Twitter or, God forbid, uh, Reddit, Reddit comments. Uh, and this is generally what's available to train these things. And they're, like, they're not actually that big, and they're not, like, it's pretty hard to do really good conversational bots with them. Um, it's hard to give a bot a stable personality, uh, something that can, like, respond to emotion and can, like, be consistent over time. Um, there's even a more philosophical uh, point, which is that chatbots don't have bodies, so it's hard to train them to respond in the way a human would with, with our arms, uh, and, you know, the way we perceive senses. Um, and then it's, it's even hard for some, something simple like this to have a working memory where a chatbot can respond to, when it can remember something it said in the past and then, and then use it into uh, a, new, a new response. Um, so Kamal yesterday had this talk about, uh, you know, a problem that was unsolvable. Uh, I really liked his title. Uh, is, if you could solve this world telling problem, uh, you could solve the halting problem. I think a title for my talk would be, if you could generate witty conversation with yourself, you could solve the Turing test. Uh, and you know, this is, this is not really possible right now. Um, so if you haven't watched Black Mirror, uh, the Turing test is this, uh, is, is this test where, uh, if, where you have two, uh, people behind a, two actors behind a curtain, and one's a computer, one's a human. Uh, if you can trick the human into thinking that uh, it's another human, you've passed the Turing test. Um, Unfortunately, this is more or less equivalent to producing general artificial intelligence, and like this is years away. Um, so this is a this is a pro tip that I learned. Um, <laughs> before submitting to a conference, make sure that you're not committing to solving an open research problem. <laughs> 
Um, but I think on the flip side, I learned a lot from this, and it's you know plunging naively into a problem is a really good way to learn about that space, even if you don't actually solve what you were trying to solve. Um, and then besides the point, uh, sometimes it's really nice to have someone to talk to in the middle of the night. <laughs> um. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> cool. That's great. So, yeah. That's <laughs> uh, a little bit of Canadian Canadian coming into it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. Thank you. All right.